and they stay there. Hey guys, welcome to another video. This one's a tutorial video and I'm working on my mask that I've done some custom stuff to. I'll link to the video where this kind of originated from. But uh, my intention to was always to put a stencil on it to make it a little more cool looking. I didn't want to do the skull thing because everyone else is doing that. So I came up with this design that's uh, kind of a Jaws theme, like a shark Jaws that I've made fit into this um, shape of the mask. And I kind of sat on it for a while, then I put up an Instagram picture and the response was pretty awesome. Um, we got over 100 comments, which was like my most liked picture ever and everyone was pretty much, yeah, go ahead, do it, it's a, it looks good. So here's the part where I actually make it happen. I'm kind of ahead of the game here. I do have access to a paper cutting machine. So I took my stencil, my vector stencil that I did in uh, Illustrator and I had it cut on this piece of paper. And this paper is also a sticky paper, so when I peel it all out, I can then peel off the sticky back and apply it to here. I don't know how well this is going to go because this is a pretty complicated pattern, especially the tooth part. And the mask has a lot of curves and bends. So it might be a little tough getting this on here without a bunch of wrinkles and a bunch of bleed through when they go to spray it. But let's try it and hopefully it'll turn out nicely. So. Here's my mask. I'm going to go ahead and take off the goggle. I have it tied in together with some string here to make it easier to align. So I'm going to take that off. So now I just have my mesh mask and here I have a test stencil that I did just to check for fitment. But basically it's going to go something like this. Obviously you'll have all the red parts will be knockout parts and I have it printed in three pieces just because the size constraints of the paper cutting machine. But really I would probably do this in two pieces if I, if I could. One for the, the basic jaw shape and then one for the tooth shape just so the stencils have a little more structure to them. Let's go ahead and peel off the paper. I'm going to keep all the negative space pieces here just because I might need them later to touch something up maybe. But basically, I will have my stencil and then I'm going to attempt to apply it. So I'm going to peel all this off. If you don't have access to a paper cutting machine, which I know it's pretty un unusual that somebody does, uh, you can definitely cut this out by hand, whatever stencil you end up doing. It, of course, is easier this way and more precise, but don't let that discourage you. Okay, so here are the three pieces that I'll need. It's the negative space, because once it's on there, I'm gonna spray paint it like a light gray uh, to pop off the black. So I'm gonna start off with the jaw part first. Uh, it's two pieces here, but it, I'm gonna put them together to make it one big stencil. I'll wrap it around here uh, using tape, maybe some thumbtacks, just to get it as close as I can to the surface. So I have as little soft edges as possible. And hopefully when that's done, we'll peel it off, see how that looks, and then apply the teeth. And then maybe go in and fix a few things with a marker. So I'm going to go ahead and try to apply this around the mask, and then we'll spray paint that a light gray.
All right, you guys, so here it is. I've applied the three stencils and three separate paintings. It was a huge pain in the butt. Uh, the stuff didn't want to stick. Had to use some pins, some um, on some of these clips. Uh, it didn't go on very smooth, but I'm surprised how well this actually turned out so far. Uh, I used like a, a gray color for the jaw, and then I went to do it for the teeth, and three of my gray colors all clogged up on me, the spray can. So I was very frustrated, but I used the white to finish off the teeth, so you could see they pop off a little more. Uh, I think it's a little too much contrast going on now. I want it a little more subtle. So I might just go ahead and give the whole thing a light spray of black just to tone it down. And definitely here, I'm going to have, give it some black because uh, spraying from the fabric to the plastic here is a hard transition. Just because the plastic accepts the paint really well while the fabric kind of soaks it up so it comes on really light. So I'm going to give it a little black, fade it out on both ends. And then I'm going to go in with a gray marker and a black marker and define some of these lines so it's a little more defined. You can see there's a lot of soft lines where the stencil would lift and the paint would kind of just feather through and you get these uneven finishes. So I think it's a good start and it looks pretty good so far. I'm surprised how well it actually turned out for how messy the templates were applied. But it's going to need a little more finesse, a little fine touching by hand and I'll come back and show you the end results. So not bad. Stay tuned for the finished product. Okay guys, so here's the finished product. Uh, I took it back inside after you saw it last. It was very messy. There was a lot of overspill. So I went in with some black Sharpie and this gray silver Sharpie to touch it up. Basically just straighten out all the teeth, sharpen all the edges, uh, referencing the template. And then I came in with a sharpie and put a few highlights in some places just to give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional feel. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's subtle, but it's definitely noticeable and it's pretty symmetrical. It looks cool. Uh, it was a pretty difficult project. I really don't want to do it again. So <clears throat> I'm glad I got it done. Uh, I wouldn't really change too much. I'm not sure what's the best way to do this, but honestly, it's you're pretty much doing it twice. First you put in a stencil which kind of gives you a general guide where stuff goes and then the second time around you're tracing it, you're re-putting it in so you're almost doing the work twice. But I think it turned out well and it's going to be a good look out there on the airsoft field. So stay tuned, there'll be gameplay coming up with me using this lower as my um, get up. So make sure you subscribe and you can see it in action soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.